I'm, my name is Martin Basto and we're at the Undercroft Gallery in Norwich and we're looking at the work of Michael Smith, a retrospective work of um, body of his work and uh, I'm going to walk around and give you a little bit of background on Michael, knowing Michael over the years and maybe some of his uh, me methodology of working. Uh, he he doesn't speak with um, uh, with ease. It's quite difficult for him. So, so we've we haven't got maybe all of the information we'd, that he would like us to have uh, to know how to give a narrative really about his work. Uh, but we've done our best to put the work together in a way that we think uh, represents uh, his story. And I'll um, tell you a little bit about that. Um, Michael came to live with us in um, the uh, late late 1970s, and I was a lot, little bit younger than him, and I looked after him for a few years before we opened uh, an art centre in 1986. Immediately, he reacted to to um, painting and sculpture with the same pro prolific hunger and. Uh, keenness for, for just working all day long that he had shown in the, in the previous years. He always liked to, you know, if there was a hoover, he'd hoover forever and get angry if he, if, you know, he said, that's enough hoovering, let's have lunch now. Or putting tables to one side to be able to sweep or cleaning up or digging holes. He just loved work um, and hated stopping working. Uh, so, to have a place, a large art barn, which, which we, we set up in 1986, where he could work um, as much as he liked without being stopped until the end of the day, uh, really suited him. And he's prolifically produced um, uh, artwork, um, both sculptural and um, uh, drawing and painting. And various other, and in fact, any technique, he just crosses boundaries all the time with his techniques uh, for, for, for the last 30 years. And this is the body of his work. We think this is a self portrait. This is an, a, an early self portrait of Michael. Um, and there's a few that, that we think possibly are self portraits. There's. Um, Throughout his work, there's a, a love of these sort of bold lines. He's, in this sense, very, very brave with his, and uncompromising with his uh, mark making. He's not scared to say, this is where the edge is, this is what I want to, to depict, and that runs throughout his work. We worked on a farm. He works on a farm, still does. So there was a lot of machinery and uh, farm animals, and that runs through our through his work. This would probably be one of the machines on the farms or the local farms. Again, is showing his really bold lines um, and simple and yet incredibly sophisticated, really. Um, a vase of flowers. And then he's, he, he, he started picking up other materials and he uh, he didn't really need to be invited very much for this. He just would grab whatever was at hand and start to, to bring it into his work. So, uh, cleverly he introduced from uh, some gifts to the art center of jean material, um, uh, cutouts in a sort of Matisse type style. Um, again, this is, a, this, is a, this is a body, so he's, he, 
he's done quite a lot of portraits and full body pictures and he did spend some time uh, at the Norwich University of the Arts doing a module for, for uh, model drawing, uh, life drawing with a, with, a, with a model and uh, he, he, he loved that, responded really well to that and there's some more pictures we'll show you later on about that. There's a section of work that is, uh, relates to the sea and to ships, to boats. Again, using foul materials and starting for the very first time to, to experiment with um, his beloved masking tape, which spreads throughout, throughout his work. This is 20 years ago. More recently, he's still using masking tape, winding it round. Making some of the objects that he would use to build. Um, making his own saw out of masking tape and found stuff, found wood. But the real saw that he would have in his hand, he'd work at his bench, this is his bench, and he'd cut and cut and cut all of these marks are 20 years worth of Michael cutting, um, sometimes with a hex saw, sometimes with a wood saw through any material that he managed to get his hands onto and cutting through this metal as well. Uh, he has gone through hundreds of saws. And this is really evocative of, of Michael's ethics, work ethic and just love of um, being engaged with the process of art. another portrait we, he he was influenced by uh, a visit to the Sainsbury Center where we were looking at African art so he came back and did a little African section this was one of one of his interpretations of the African art he hasn't been to New York but he's done a New York subway uh, train which he probably found in a book And this was commissioned by another gallery, the 180 Gallery, and we, uh, we offered this to Michael to, 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 to create a, an image for the gallery. And very, very quickly he managed to you know, create for them an image that they loved and used. Um, and um, I guess it shows how he's able to respond to almost any challenge with real sophistication and grace and just ease, just he could just do it so easily. This area here is not put together in, uh, in, in timeline or um, well, it, it, the, the reason we put these together is because they're, 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 they're farm animals and it's this grouping that uh, we thought just simply looked good and represented an, an, uh, of, uh, an important oeuvre of uh, Michael's work. He loves fire. This is a cow from the farm and there's various other animals, a horse. But also, you know, a monkey, which is it's not from the farm, but he just, he just loves mixing up uh, whatever he sees in books and around him.
I think like most um, artists, his first love is drawing. That's where his, his, he makes his primary statement. And, and then the work afterwards is, 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 is embellishment and, and, and uh, experimentation. But his first, his first mark making is, is, is drawing the, the line with, with, with um, pencil on paper. He's really comfortable with it, and he absolutely loves it. He's been drawing for 30 years incessantly. He's continually producing bold um, portraits, designs. This is a section of, uh, of, of, of portraits that he did at the time that he was at um, Newer, uh, Norwich University Arts, doing a course there, as I've explained. Um, other portraits he's more recently done yeah, with, yeah. with felt tips. Yeah. In fact, these are much more his book. His, his more recent design, his more recent design, and more recent work. There's some more that are very much like that over here. We can go and have a look at them. Recent work. Um, he's become, uh, with age, less physically capable, and has spent uh, the last few weeks after um, becoming quite ill last year in a, in a wheelchair. So he's less able to move around and uh, and sort of operate in the art centre as he used to. So he's he's more he's more. Uh, set in front of, uh, of a work area with, with his choice of um, uh, materials and this is what he's producing now, uh, still producing prolifically uh, and this is his current, uh, current work. Very colourful, partly because of the, 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 the great pens that he's got but also using the same, same grids that he tends to, tends to like powerful, bold colours and lines. In this area, there's an important part of um, Michael's work, his, his cowboy, cowboy trousers or jean collection. Um, Michael's managed to to combine fashion with sculpture with drawing with almost his own unique way of uh, of of, uh, of telling us about the you know his his physical his physical world you know we can almost feel what it's like to be in his trousers and. Um, and he's painstakingly uh, made these jeans, which he loves. They're often around cowboy ideas, but not necessarily. Um, and he manages to to create objects that are so unusual and so personal, and in a way quite difficult to describe. But um, but to see them is to, is, 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 to, is to marvel at something that is just extraordinary. You know, you, you don't, you don't, see, you can't, don't see this reinvention of the trouser in this form you know, ever really. It, it's a, it's a, it's a really clever, really clever, and really bold, um, and it's um, all the time using. 
employing his absolute love of masking tape. He's gone through tons of masking tape. All just masking tape, around and around and around. Sometimes the jeans, the trouser idea becomes so abstracted that, uh, that, they, that they, they become a, another stand, standalone form. I mean, uh, they are still a trouser leg, but um, uh, but just with this repetition of of grid lines, which he's had from his earlier work. There's, there's, um, there's a story in here which is, goes beyond the trouser and it's about his, his, his personal language, I think. And he's, he's creating these two, um, 3D sculptures um, Yeah, they become just abstract art, I think. Abstract stand, yeah, just abstract art. Well, workbench. He would have, he would have cut all these with saws and then screwed all this by hand. Days and days and days of it. I think these sculptures. Um, more than anything else, tell us about Michael's work. He just loves work. Uh, in, 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 he's a builder, really. He's, a, he's someone who would want to build stuff. And um, he's passionate about it. And he'll do these all day long. Sometimes Michael would um, take over a space in the art centre, and uh, we had one big table that was, that was meant to be divided into four zones for four different people to work. And he took over all four zones and strapped some uh, some paper around the side and started sticking it and masking it. And in the end, we um, well, we left him to work on that for a. Quite a long while, and he produced this tabletop piece. Again, you've got his use of grid in lines, which are part of his. artistic language, whether he's doing it in masking tape or pen, pencil. And 
and uh, we can see again the same use of printed lines and masking tape. These came from the same period as the tabletop image. It's uh, quite difficult to archive this work because the, the masking tape tends to, tends to pull away and the, um, the cloth becomes unstable as well. So we have quite a lot of difficulty in knowing just how to look after it. And uh, we've resolved that by covering it in a sort of resinous um, PVA finish, which holds it all together. It does change slightly the quality of, of the work, but it's the only way to preserve it, we think. Again, we're in a box of, box of uh, screws, almost used like a drawing line. Drawing with screws. He's so purposeful that he can get, you know, that he can do this. It's uh, it takes a certain very determined mind to, to 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 come up with these concepts. I think. Again, we've got Michael's machine, like a lot of machinery. Two farm machines. And where we've been building in the arts, in, in, he was involved in building, and this is some banisters. So there's an sort of architectural element. Yeah, so that's um, that's Michael's show, and um, I hope that's been of use, and uh, uh, I, and that you've been able to see what it's like to experience his work in this space, even though maybe you weren't able to get here to to uh, see it in person.